I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. We've got our inverter, eight kilowatt or 8.8 .8 kilowatt. We've got our batteries and they are 4.8 4 .8 kilowatt. We've got two of them. Got all of our isolators, fuses, all the cables and stuff. So gonna get this one on the wall. Utility room's already wired up. We've got all our sockets and switches and stuff on. Haven't wired up the consumer unit because I want to get this into place and then check all the cable lengths between the two. So at the end of this video, we should have, should have proper power. We've also got a generator sat behind me. So backup generator, a bigger version. So maybe our power woes will be no more. This is our current generator. This, this is our new generator. I haven't run it yet, but I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this. It was 1200 quid and, or thereabouts, probably on offer actually. The other one we got was not quite as much, but nearly, I think it was about a thousand pounds. This one, I'll put the proper specs on screen, but I think it puts out five, 5.5 5 kilowatts. The other one puts out 1600 watts. So it's like three, four times the power. But the thing that impressed me is that they send it with a plug for every single socket or a socket for every single plug. Oil filler, battery starts, keys, all the bits you need there. But then when I open this service door, they also include the service pack and this has got oil filter, air filter and diesel filter, including the O-ring for the oil filter. So I was like, well, that's, that's like everything you need. And usually when you buy the cheap one, because this was, you know, some generators can be thousands and thousands and thousands, you, you expect it's cheap because it doesn't include all of this. It was from Generators, Generators Direct, I think, or Hampshire Generators. I'll put that on the screen as well. But um, yeah, so far, I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this. It's also got wheels, so you can, like it's big and heavy, but you can, you can push it.
by such difference. Had a clean up. Tied, well, I'm cleaning at the worktop, but um, there we go. The inverter is now on, working, it's plugged in. Um, I didn't film any of the wiring because this clearly states in many, many places that it's not a DIY a bull thing. So if you've seen our previous videos, you know that I'm not afraid of showing my mistakes, but I really didn't want anybody viewing this as a guide because if I've done anything wrong, which is fairly likely, um, I didn't want anybody seeing what I'd done, copying it and then causing themselves some problems um, as well as, there's no problems with me yet, but you know, I just, I just didn't want to be showing people to do the wrong thing and I'm not all that sure. I have DIY'd it, but you get the point, right? So this, this is amazing. This is the Sunsync 8.8 .8 kilowatt inverter. And the reason that I went with this one is because we've got hydro, we've got solar, we've got no grid, so it's not a grid tied inverter, although it could be. Um, and we've also got a generator that we want to run. And this doesn't need any other appliances. Um, by appliances, what I mean is if you get a normal inverter or a lot of other inverters, you have to buy the inverter, which takes the, um, it deals with charging your battery and it, it supplies the actual power to your, your load or your house, if that's what you're doing. But if you have solar power, you have to then have a separate solar charge controller, which controls the power from the solar. It's charge controller, it controls the charge, charging the batteries. Um, and then because we have hydro as well, we'd have to get a separate one. So this, this does the whole lot in one box. Underneath there, I've just got solar connectors um, and they plug straight in. And then you can see on the screen here, it just, get it without the lights it just kind of does it inside there are settings that you can set up and it is quite quite a complicated setup but m1 is our solar at the minute and the weather outside is that so you know there's no very little solar there has been a few watts coming in but it shows you just there what's coming in. and then that's the hydro which i've just turned on um slowly just so that we've got some kind of input for now because i'm just testing it at the moment uh but it just it manages all the states, all your renewables uh, inside. And it's got two charge controllers, so they're separate. So, and they, they seem to come across the board. If you buy the smaller versions of these, they also seem to come with two. So this is amazing. It's also no, no more expensive. So I actually forget how much this was because I'll put it on the screen. It was, uh, I bought this with all the other batteries and stuff. So it kind of came in at about 7,000, I think, for, for the whole lot. Um, but this is no more expensive than a single inverter. And then you have to buy all the con charge controllers. So I'm very, very pleased with this. You can also run um, dump loading internally. So you can set this up to dump load, which if you haven't watched other videos and you don't know about hydro, if your batteries are full and you're still putting out hydropower, you need to send that power elsewhere. You can't just have it. Uh, with solar, the power just kind of I'm not actually sure what happens with it, but solar power is okay running power without it being used. Whereas hydropower, it stops the load on the generator and it overspins and then blows the bearings up or overheats or it causes problems. So you have to have the power constantly used. So I don't even have to get a dump loader for this. It just does it all, all of it. So, I mean, I'm still setting it up, so I can't say everything's perfect. I'm still trying to set the generator up and that's not quite working at the moment, um, but I mean, th this is very, very good. Okay, what, what else have we got going on? So these are also very good. Um, I got all my stuff here, by the way, from Bimble Solar. I've mentioned them before, uh, and they sort of spec these bits for me. So I didn't choose these. They, they recommended them for me. So th that's the main power. So the power comes from here, goes through the isolator, it goes into our fuse board. These are combination fuses and isolators. So I'm not going to yank it out right now, but if you pull that like that, lever it down that disconnects the two fuses and isolates your that's solar that's hydro that's generator but it just saves having an isolator this is an isolator here an isolator just turns it or disconnects it right so you you know if, you, if you're fiddling with this end you're not going to get electrocuted if you've disconnected that um, so to save having one of these and a fuse that's just a fuse you 
disconnect and fuse in one box. There's less wiring, there's less space. Like the whole thing here takes up, um, you know, that much space. That on the top, by the way, is the Starlink internet. I've just, that's nothing to do with it. That cable's just running less tidily than the rest because it's just, that's our, you know, internet. So that's just sitting up there. But really, 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 really impressed with that. I'll show you the other side. This side I've tidied up nicely, or as nice as I can get. I wanted them to be a bit straighter than they are, but that's as good as I could bend them really without um, causing problems. So the other side's not quite as tidy because this is more of the action side. But um, you know, like I say, don't copy what I'm doing here. The consumer unit is supposed to have the lid on. That hasn't at the moment. That's our power to the caravan. So that runs the consumer unit. This is our dump load. So I've wired this into the dump load. This is plugged in and then we've got a two kilowatt heater here which just runs um, when the battery's at full. We've got our battery isolator and fuses there. We've got our rectifier for our hydro there. All of this won't make any sense if you're not used to this kind of stuff. But this side is where this all is. I've put the batteries, you've probably seen me build the batteries into a box here because I, uh, I've got limited space in here and my son's fire engine wants to go just there and I didn't want to start running the batteries. You see there's a door there, there's a door there. So if I had the batteries there, I would lose this space for the fire engine. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's a valid justification, but uh, I didn't want, to, didn't want to move his fire engine. He plays with it quite a lot. So there we go. Finally, we have power. It's pretty good as well. It does make a little whirring noise. The, um, the inverter kind of whirs away a bit, but you know, the, the lights are on in here and it's just, I haven't had enough light in here to be able to plug a socket into the floor without bringing a torch in. Even with that window on, it's just so hard to see. Got the washing machine plugged into the mains power now. Got the pump plugged into the mains power now. There's a fridge. Fridge freezer behind us here and it's on. It's plugged in. I don't know whether it'd be cold yet or not, but um, yeah, finally we're off the kind of portable battery bank and although there's a bit more setting up to do, we have our solar and our hydro coming in reliably and I'm not concerned it's gonna explode. Also, the hydro, by the way, when I turn the hydro on, I'm only running on one nozzle at the minute. So it's only putting out 200 watts because I just wanted something coming in um, just to t check all the fuses and everything were wired up properly. I didn't want it to you know, turn up full power and something goes pop. Um, but when I had it on before with the EcoFlow, you turn the generator on and it would kind of pulse. You'd hear this like, and it was probably trying to draw too much um, power from it or it was doing something funny. I've just turned it on now and it's really even. Like the sound of the turbine is much more even. Um, the watts on the screen are sort of jumping between about 200, 226, 212. So it's just a far more constant power and so whatever this, whatever, the, it does work with the EcoFlow. That's, that's this thing just here. It does work with that, but it's just far smoother with, and I suspected this, I think I said it in previous videos, but it's just far smoother, um, far smoother on this. There we go there. Still getting sort of used to the buttons on the screen. So other than trying to fix the generator problem, which is just that the generator won't charge the batteries and that's, um, that's something I'm working through, but I think it's a system, a system setup rather than um, a problem with the, uh, you know, the inverter or the, or the battery bank or the generator itself. So very happy, happy with the lights. It's just, it's so odd. We've been here for six months and I haven't had a light that's on a light switch for, um, forever so yeah really happy with that so on to more things i suppose we'll get the office ready in the next one that's the kind of stuff you like come join us be nice to see you there we'll see you in the next one i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do it again <laughs>